time during the show. Type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 FM 90. Hello, a very warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. My name is Edmond Chizito, your host. On Spectrum tonight, the unending cases of corruption in Uganda, who should be blamed for the botched procurement of bicycles meant for local council chairpersons. Parliament through the Local Government and Public Services Committee is probing circumstances under which an Indian company, Aman Impex and its local subsidiary Aman Tools and Industrial Equipment, got paid 5 billion shillings but failed to deliver 30,000 bicycles according to the contract. Aman Impex had undertaken to supply these 70,000 bicycles meant for local council chairpersons through its subsidiary Ugandan company. Uh, which is Aman Tools and Industrial Equipment, and was subsequently paid the 5 billion shillings, which is 40% of the entire contract sum. At the center of this controversy is the local government ministry, which is being blamed for not heeding to advice and for failing to carry out due diligence on the companies before contracting them. The ministry is blaming Bank of Uganda, which is its bank, for accepting fake documents, that is the bill of lading, upon which it paid the company through Standard Bank. Bank of Uganda is in turn blaming Standard Bank, saying this bank fronted unworthy customers, an accusation that Standard Bank has rejected, saying it only acted as an advisory bank, an advisory bank pardon me, to their client in relation to the letter of credit, which is the irrevocable undertaking to pay, presented by Bank of Uganda on behalf of the local government ministry. Today, Patrick Bagarukayo, who is seen as an agent of Aman Impex and its majority Indian-based shareholder, Ajunani Rajeskarani, were arrested after contradictions before the probe committee. He denied being an agent of the company, but later admitted that he was a coordinator and was paid, well, a mere $50,000. So tonight we take a look at this latest corruption scandal as we seek to understand who should take the blame and if at all there is hope that the 1.7 million dollars or 5 billion shillings is likely to be recovered. Our guest tonight, Honorable Betty Namboze, Shadow Minister of Local Government, also a member of Parliament from Kone Municipality and a member of the Local Government and Public Service Committee. You're most welcome, Honorable Namboze. Thank you, Edmond. We, expect to be, we expected to be joined by Mr. John Kashaka, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of <coughs> Local Government. We invited him and he agreed to appear today. But but when contacted later in the evening about his attendance, he indicated that he was unable to appear because uh, uh, there was an emergency on, it, on, on, on his part. So we will, Spectrum will try to get him before the week is out, so he can give his side of the story. Honorable Namboze, can you give us some background to this bicycle deal? Uh, good evening, listeners. Uh Edmond, as I was saying before, went on air. I don't know why it has taken you all this long to invite me for your program. Yes. But all the same, I'm here and I'm happy to be here. Better late than never. Better late than never. Um, first of all, I want to, to greet in a special way my people of Mukono Municipality because, of course, uh, they are the ones who sent me to Parliament. Um, and then I want to greet all the Ugandans, especially uh, those... Uh, in areas which matter most to me as the shadow minister for local government and Kampala. Um, it all started with a letter from His Excellency's office, the office of the president by the former minister of presidency, Honorable Beatrice Wabdea, in May 2010. He originated a letter indicating that uh, the president had given a directive to the Ministry of Local Government to find money uh, to buy bicycles for LC ones across the country and then LOC2 chairmen. LOC1 chairmen, um, I do gather that at the moment we have about 56,000 LOC ones, that is verages, and then we have a number of publishers, so these bicycles are supposed to be given to Chairman LOC1 at each verge and then Chairman LOC2 uh, at each parish. Um, this is where, uh, for me as a shadow minister, uh, who is supposed to check government, I found that everything started here because when you give a false foundation to uh, a, a house, that house will definitely collapse at one time or the other. Uh, you find that 
uh, the Ministry of the Government never sat anywhere on its own to, to, to come up with this idea, say that maybe because of this and this we want bicycles for our LOC ones. And the timing is off. Uh, we are talking about uh, May 2011. Uh, a letter comes from the President's office as a directive to the Ministry of Local Government. Find money and procure bicycles for LOC 1s and LOC 2s. This is His Excellency's directive. That is what they ask later. So, uh, the, 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 the directive is forwarded, money is, uh, is, is funds are, are, are procured, and then the process starts from there. One question we must ask ourselves, Edmond, that did we have LOC1 chairmen and LOC2 chairmen by May 2010, at least legally? Because I have the constitution here with me. Yes. Uh, Article 181. At 181.5, if, and if you allow me to read, you see, yes, elections of all local government councils shall take place at least uh, 60 days before the expiry of the term of the existing council, but shall not coincide with the presidential or parliamentary elections. Uh, but more specifically, I wanted a... Uh, an article, uh, the section which talks about that. The election of, of all local councils shall be held ever after five years. Yes. So, by, by 2010, and you know, even FDC had been to court over this, by 2010, we did not have um, legally elected officers occupying LOC1 seats. Yes. What we, we also had an election for LOC ones in 2000 and, um, and, uh, and, and, and won. So their time expired in 2006. We had to hold fresh elections for LOC ones. Uh, incidentally, we did not have those elections won because the law under which they were going to be elected had been challenged in courts of law successfully. Uh, we were under a multi-party dispensation, yes. and the arrangement was that we are going to elect these LOC ones under the movement system. Right. FDC challenged this successfully, and the, the elections were, held, uh, were not held. And then there was the issue of registering the voters at LOC1. Because we could not use the same registers, like the one we use for the election of the president and, 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 the, parla and the parliamentary elections. Because to, to be able to, 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 to participate in an LOC1 election, you must be a resident of the area. Right. Whereas to participate in the presidential elections, don't necessarily need to be a resident of that area. Right. There was a, also a question of non-Ugandans. And uh, people were saying that uh, when you look at Bello, even people who are not Ugandans can elect the LOC one because they reside, uh, in, area. Because they reside in that area. And so there was all those arguments around in th those elections. And then the issue of funds came up when the Electoral Commission said we cannot hold these elections because we don't have the funds available. So by 2010, uh, the, 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 the priority would have been to secure funds for election of LOC one chairmen and so that they could also be able to appoint their councils. What happened? Instead of the Minister of Local Government advising His Excellency, because this is what they are supposed to do, right. uh, I, I, I don't find it as a surprise that Mr. Kashak is not here, because she would be required to answer some of these questions. He fell sick at the last minute. Yes, he fell sick at the last minute. But him, as a technical person, he would have advised the, the political leaders, and for that matter, His Excellency, the President, if I told him he made this directive, because that one is also under contention. How do you know that one day as later really originated from a presidential directive? But uh, the permanent secretary would have advised that the priority now is not to <laughs> to, to equip LOC ones who don't exist anyway. Right. The priority now should be to secure funds so that the country can hold those elections. He didn't do that. So it was a false start. From the very beginning, this transaction was destined to flop because it had been conceived. You know, I can't say it was a steel bath. Then, from there, bids uh, were announced. The adverts were pressed in the newspapers and various companies uh, applied. But
particular you wonder among those companies which applied was Lord Master. Yes, which is a local company. Uh, Lord, Master, Lord Master is a local company, and when you look at its record, it has been uh, supplying bicycles to different departments of uh, government uh, successfully. We have not had any problem with them. Uh, instead, uh, they contracted an uh, Indian firm called Aman Impex Limited, whatever it is, yes. which has a local partner here called Aman Tools and Company Limited. Right. And when you go on the internet, you just have to put that word in, in, uh, in Google. Uh, you Google Aman, you will find that it is a company dealing in coconut. Yes. And it's a sister company dealing in beverages, dealing tea. Um, and you, you really wonder how, how the wisdom behind this. How could somebody have left a company like a Lord Master and instead chosen to deal with a company which deals in coconut? No, those are all questions. The committee, of course, I must tell you that I'm not here to make conclusions because we as a committee, we are still investigating. But I'm just taking you through uh, this. And then, there's also another interesting thing. These bicycles were supposed to be delivered in Uganda at yes. the district headquarters in February 2011. Think about it. Yes. None of us know what was happening in Uganda True. <laughs> at that time. Yes. So, why would you think that a government properly guided by reason would they choose to bring bicycles in February 2011 when the whole country had gone for elections? Right. Were these bicycles to be given to LOC ones, as it is claimed? Or they were going to be given out to certain people for uh, campaigns or as an appreciation uh, to some people who had supported a certain group of individuals. Uh, all these uh, issues really for the committee to look into, but they also uh, help us to throw light about the transaction itself. Yes. But from the very beginning, the way it was um, conceived, the way it was constituted, uh, executed, it was destined to flop. Um, so when we started this matter, it did not come up um, just from nowhere. Yes. Um, when we sat as a local government and um, public account, uh, pub, uh, local government and public service committee, yes. we are looking through the budget, this year's budget of, of our ministry, right. and we discovered that they had indicated that last year they had bought bicycles, 70,000 bicycles for LOC 1s and LOC 2s across the country. Yes. So we came in to ask, so, but that, then I live in Mukona, I've never seen these bicycles. So when we questioned that transaction, this is when um, information started coming in and we raised this matter with, uh, with, with, with the plenary when parliament sat as, as a whole and we raised this matter in our report. This is when the speaker decided that the committee should be given this um, duty to go and investigate this matter further. So that is how we have been calling all these people. Uh, considering the amounts of money which have been stolen in Uganda of recent, you will find that the amount of this transaction is so little. I'm not saying that it is little money, but comparing it with uh, other thefts in, in, in the country. Yes. But what makes it very important is the, 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 the subject matter of the transaction. Yes. These are those calls for LOC ones. Yes. And what do they say? That they were going to be given out to facilitate mobilization at that level. Yes. Uh, Edmond, you know, that I need more you go and also. Uh, as ordinal as m my father yes. in Kowe here in Busiro, right. he's a member of parliament in his own right because every Ugandan who is 18 years and above is supposed to participate in the LOC1 council meeting as a councillor there. Right. So this is the people's government, the most basic government in the right. country. Yes. So to steal from it is to directly steal from the people. Right. So that is, that's why this 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 particular item is very important. That's not what that's why the committee is not looking at it as uh, uh, a loss of four billion shillings only, yes. but that the ordinary person in his ordinary council right. has been deprived of them because as Peter Andrews has given a current parliament. Yes. 
As a permanent secretary is being chopped around by uh, in a government vehicle. Yes. We expected the LOC one also to have the, uh, this facility of a bicycle to take him around his village. Leave alone the other arguments I've been putting across that <laughs> in the first place we don't have properly constituted LOC ones. That one aside, it's a technical thing. Uh, that's a technical matter. But to steal from the LOC ones, you are stealing directly from the, the most ordinary person in this country. That's what makes it very important right. for us. Um, <clears throat> True, we have been receiving various witnesses in, in the committee, and you will excuse me, because I, uh, given the, 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 the level of the investigations we are about to conclude, I can't draw uh, conclusions here. But the people who have been coming to, to, to the committee have been giving very, very interesting, uh, 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 they have been making very interesting revelations about the, the whole exercise. Yes. Uh, first of all, that in the first place, the, the suppliers had indicated that their bank is City Bank of New York. Yes. But the money ended up at Stanley Bank in at Garden City here right. in Uganda. Yes. That money, 1.7 million US dollars, reached their account on the 15th of March 2011. Yes. And by 16th of March 2011, the bank account was empty. Yes. And money had been wired to different destinations. Hong Kong, uh, some money was withdrawn by Ugandans here and shared here, uh, China, India, and you couldn't imagine that money which was supposed to buy bicycles from India yes. could end up being wired to Hong Kong, to China, to everywhere, to all destinations in hours. In, 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 in a record period of 24 hours, the, the, the account was empty. And when you go out for that, who are these people who received these monies? You will see companies dealing in Joel, others dealing in iron bars, others dealing in cement, others dealing in coconut. And nothing. No bicycle. No bicycle there. Today, somebody has stand up in the committee and told us that, by the way, um, 1,200 bicycles uh, lying at Mombasa support and the, uh, uh, this company is ready now to deliver them to Uganda. 1,200? 1,200. 70,000 bicycles. And the argument was very clear from the very beginning that the ministry shall pay for the bicycles as soon as the suppliers bring documents indicating that they had shipped yes. the bicycles. Right. They bring the bill of lending and then they will be paid 40%. Right. Eventually, instead of uh, shipping 70,000 bicycles, yes. uh, these people sent according to the documents they presented anyway, yes. 30,000. Yes. But still they were paid 40%. Right. Of, of, of the monies. Um, eventually, the 30, now we are waiting for 30,000 at least. Yes. People would say, no, maybe 30,000 bicycles will, will reach Uganda. Now they are telling us that in fact there are 1,200 bicycles at Mombasa. Those are very interesting. You know, very disturbing. I, I can't call them interesting, in fact. But very disturbing statements from officers. Uh, the Solicitor General came into this matter um, at the request of the Permanent Secretary, Mr. Kashaka. He said, can you advise us as a ministry? We told you these people money, but we can't see them. Where are they? How, how, do give us guidance on how we proceed from here. The Solicitor General wrote and told Mr. Kashaka as a Permanent Secretary that please terminate this contract to start with. Terminate the contract. I try as much as possible to recover the money from Amman. Free, give uh, the, the contract to the second highest bidder. And we have been told it was Nairo fishing, whatever. And you can't imagine. Now it's, a, now it's, another, a, it's another company now. I mean, dealing with fish. Fish. Now <laughs> it is the second highest bidder. That, <laughs> yeah, because now we have 60% of the money still with us. Yes. So if those people have, have, have taken off with 40%, now contact the second 
has to be there yes. then uh, and, and give him the contacts so that he can bring the bicycles this was our device then we report this matter to police and it also contacted the international police mm -hmm. sisters. now uh, the permanent secretary writes a letter uh, to 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 a man industries a man it is called a man tool and equipment limited and say look here we have terminated your contract two we are giving you two weeks to to refund our money and then he contacts uh, police the case is reported at police here yeah? and then he has indicated that he also uh, reported the, the matter with the international police yes. he contacts the our ambassador in to India and then the Indian ambassador in Uganda to start looking for this man yes but as he appeared before the committee this, uh, this, this morning today in the morning yes. he told us that in fact he's in he, he's in contact with the suppliers and they are bringing the bicycles then I was questioning his management style you have issued a letter terminating the contract right huh? yes. you have even told those people to refund the money in two weeks time yeah. and again you go back on your own words and contact them and say that uh, but still you can still deliver the best course right. here why are you stuck with this company you have probably told us that this company is a fake company chichupoli company right. yeah. why are you still dealing with it why are you utilizing the 60 percent of the money still lying with Bank of Uganda yes. to buy those calls right. as of now because um, um, you, you could proceed uh, buy the bus calls as you look for the other person to refund our money he has no answer for all these questions this is what I can tell you Ugandans I'm not here to say it is so and so who right. stole the money um, the recommendations will come from the, the committee but what we all agree upon now is that money was lost 40 percent uh, of the 11 billion shillings right two uh, that the company a man uh, was a fake company right three uh, it has, as much as uh, it was an indian company some of the Indians eh, are Ugandans. Right. <laughs> and these Ugandans who are Indians are black men like me. <laughs> but in numbers, the born in the machine. Be who become an Indian <laughs> just before he got his deal, maybe. <laughs> hey, so, when. when, when, when Indian was born in the Indian was born in the uh, You see, Patrick Bagal, how when he, he turned up. He was an Indian today. He is an in, was an Indian in the past, but when he came before the committee, we saw this, this is a man born in <laughs> Ushay. Um, oh. So we, we all agree that then the, the boom game started. Bank of Uganda insists that it paid this money into standing bank account for the benefit of the suppliers. Right. After getting information from the Ministry of Local Government that indeed because there is a form here they filled uh, the, those people in the, in the local government ministry they filled the form and sent it Bank of Uganda that we have cross checked yes was the suppliers yes and we have now established that the best calls have been delivered in Uganda oh. and they are of the right quantity and the quality, quality. So they should pay the money. So please go ahead and pay the money. All right, we'll go for a break. <laughs> this is Spectrum on Radio One. We're you now hearing about uh, ghost bicycles. Interesting things that begin to happen in this. Of course, ghost, ghost bicycles for ghost embassies and Indians who are black men born in Bushenyi yes. of all places. <laughs> well, allow me to say this. It reminds me of a scandal in Kenya. They had the, what they call the Golden Bag scandal. They stole almost a billion dollars. Uh, in fake export compensation for diamond exports. Kenya is not, a, is not known to export, to even to mine diamonds, but someone was claiming export compensation and it took a hand, almost a $1 billion from the state coffers. This is happening now in our beloved country, getting a company that sells coconuts so they can deliver bicycles. Hmm. We're going for a break. We'll be right back.
Maria, Maria. Hey, Mom, what are you doing here? I forgot to spread on the other slice, Maria. Take this. Hey, Mrs. Makumbi, what are you doing here? You know, mm. Blue Band helps my child grow. That's why I spread on every slice. Every slice spread with Blue Band is an opportunity for your child to grow. So, moms, spread on every slice. Daily Blue Band, daily growth. Is your internet provider turning your world upside down? <sighs> Broadband Company offers fast and reliable internet solutions. And for the first 100 subscribers this month, we offer zero connection fees. Save up to 400,000. For more information on these offers, call toll free 0800 222 Broadband Company, more than you expect. <laughs> Spirit that binds us. Strictly not for sale to persons under 18 years. Please drink responsibly. Let's show you how to multiply your savings. Starting with the cash beneath the mattress to the savings in the bank that aren't making money. Let's turn your savings into some things with Super Save Reloaded. Super Save Reloaded brings you savings and investment accounts.